Maurice Francois Garin was an Italian-born French road bicycle racer best known for winning the inaugural Tour de France in 1903, and for being stripped of his title in the second tour in 1904 along with eight others, for cheating. Family life Garin was born the son of Maurice Clare copyright meant Garin and Maria Teresa Ozello in Arvia, in the Alster Valley in northwest Italy, close to the French border. The name Garin was the most common in the village, which was French-speaking, belonging to five of the seven families. They married in 1864 when he was a 36-year-old laborer and she a 19-year-old employee of the town's hotel. They had four daughters and five sons, of whom two were twins. Morris was the first son. The cottage in which he was born, now a ruin, still exists. In 1885 the family left Arvia to work on the other side of the Alps, as most Valdotteanians did at that time. The wish for a better life is a likely explanation but does not suggest why they travelled so far, almost to the Belgian border. Speculation surrounds the move, possibly because it was in secret. To emigrate needed authority and mayors had been told by the sub-prefect of Aarhus to refuse or at least make permission difficult. If the family travelled separately, it would explain the legend that Morris, then fourteen, was exchanged for a round of cheese, it could have been payment to a guide to lead him clandestinely over the mountains or payment in return for custody of the son. Garin worked as a chimney sweep, which again fits having been led individually across the mountains. Among the sub-prefect's reasons for stopping emigration was concern about avid speculators who, claiming to teach a trade to young children, especially that of chimney sweep, set out to seduce their parents with promises and false hopes, to get their children. To get a large profit from them by exploiting their fatigue, their misery and sometimes even their life. Garin moved to France. By 15 he was living in Reims as a chimney sweep he moved to Charleroi in Belgium but by 1889 he was back in France, at Maubeuge. If the family had travelled together, it had by then dispersed. The second son, Joseph Isidore, died 100 de km northeast of Paris in 1889. The father had returned to Arvia, where he died shortly afterwards. His brothers from a section Wa and car copyright Tsar seemed to have stayed in northern France because, with Maurice, they opened a cycle shop in the lower end of the Boulevard de Paris in Roubex in 1895. His brother car copyright Tsar Garin also competed as a professional cyclist from 1899 to 1906, and lived in Paris until his death at the age of 71. His best results were, Roubex, Bray Dunes 1899 third. Paris Roubex 1904 second. Tour de France, 1904 second on stage 5 to Nantes. Another brother Ambroise Garin also competed as a professional cyclist from 1899 to 1903, and lived at Argentuil, Val d'Oise until his death at the age of 93. His best results were, Paris Roubex 1899 third. 1901 2nd, 1902 3rd. Bordeaux, Paris 1900 3rd, 1902 3rd. Garin moved to Lens, Pas de Calais in 1902 and lived there the rest of his life. He bought his first bicycle for 405 francs, twice what a forge worker would earn in a week of 12 hour days, in 1889. Racing did not interest him, but he did ride round the town fast enough to be called a madman a Euro le fou. Amateur racing, Garin took French nationality when he was 21, in 1892 or 1901. He began racing in northern France in the same year when the secretary of the cycling club at Maubeuge persuaded him to enter a regional race, Maubeuge Hearson Maubeuge, over 200 km. Garin finished fifth despite suffering from the sun and decided to ride more. His first win was in 1893, in Namur Dinant Givet in Belgium. He had sold his first bike and bought a lighter one a euro still 16 a kg but with pneumatic tires a euro for 850 old French francs the race was over 102 a km. He was leading by din and when he punctured. Spotting a Soigner waiting with a spare bike for a rival, Garin rested his own against the wall of a bridge, grabbed the Soigner's spare bike and rode off. At the finish, winning with 10 minutes over the field, he gave back the bike and recovered his own the next day where he had left it. Professional racing, Garin became a professional by chance. 
he planned to ride a race at Aves and saw helps, 25 a km from where he lived. He arrived to find it was only for professionals. Not allowed to compete, he waited until the riders had left, raced after them and passed them all. He fell off twice but finished ahead of the racers. The crowd was enthusiastic but the organizers less so. They refused to pay him the 150 francs due to the real winner, so spectators raised 300 francs among themselves. Garin became a professional. His first true professional win was in a 24-hour race in Paris in 1893 it was held on the Champ de Mars, site of the Eiffel Tower. The riders competed, as was the custom, behind a succession of paces. The event took place in February and the cold drove out riders one after the other. Garin rode 701 a km in 24 hours, beating the only other rider to finish by 49 a km. Garin said he had survived on, in 1894 he won a 24-hour race in Lea GE, Belgium, and the following year set an hour record for cycling behind Pacers. The first Parisa Euro Rubex was in 1896. Garin came third, 15 minutes behind Joseph Fischer. He would have come second had he not been knocked over by a crash between two tandems, one of them ridden by his pacers. Garin finished exhausted and Dr. Butril was obliged to attend the man who had been run over by two machines, said the race historian, Pascal Sargent. In 1897 he won Parisa Euro Rubex, beating the Dutchman Mathieu Cordang in the last two kilometers of the velodrome at Rubex. Sargent said. As the two champions appeared they were greeted by a frenzy of excitement and everyone was on their feet to acclaim the two heroes. It was difficult to recognize them. Garin was first, followed by the mud-soaked figure of Cordang. Suddenly, to the stupefaction of everyone, Cordang slipped and fell on the velodrome's cement surface. Garin could not believe his luck. By the time Cordang was back on his bike, he had lost 100 meters. There remained six laps to cover. Two miserable kilometers in which to catch Garin. The crowd held its breath as they watched the incredible pursuit match. The bell rang out. One lap, there remained one lap. 333 meters for Garin, who had a lead of 30 meters on the Batave. A classic victory was within his grasp but he could almost feel his adversary's breath on his neck. Somehow Garin held on to his lead of two meters two little meters for a legendary victory. The stands exploded and the ovation united the two men. Garin exulted under the cheers of the crowd. Cordang cried bitter tears of disappointment. In 1898 he won Parisa Euro Rubex again, this time by 20 minutes, and in 1901 he won the second edition of Parisa Euro Brest a Euro Paris, finishing almost two hours ahead of Gaston Rivière after covering 1,208 a km in 52 H11 M1s. He started by chasing another Frenchman, Lucien Lesner, who rode the first 600 a km at 28 km h and had two hours lead at Brest. At Rennes he stopped for a bath to recover from the tiredness, filth and heat, then found he could not get racing again into the headwind. Garin passed him at Mayenne and Lesnar gave up shortly afterwards with 200 a km to go. Garin finished 19 hours 11 m better than Charles Tarrant 10 years earlier. In 1902 Garin won Bordeaux a Euro Paris, a race of 500 a km from southwest France. Tour de France, 1903 Tour de France The Tour de France began to promote a new daily sports newspaper, Lotto ahead of the largest paper in France. Le Var Copyright Low, which sold 80,000 copies a day. Some of Le Var Copyright Low's advertisers had disagreed with the paper's support for Alfred Dreyfus, a soldier found guilty of selling secrets to the Germans but eventually acquitted after being sent to Devil's Island. The tour was to promote their new rival paper, Lotto. The editor, Henri de Scrange, planned a five-week race from May 31 to July 5. This proved too daunting and only 15 entered. De Scrange cut the length to 19 days and offered a daily allowance. The race began at the Auréville Matin Cafard copyright at a crossroads in Montjuin, south of Paris, and ended in Ville d'Avry, another suburb, having circuited France in six days of racing over 2,428 km. One stage, between Nantes and Paris, 
was 471 a km. 60 riders started at an entry fee of 10 francs a euro 87.50 today with inflation a euro, and 21 finished. Garin won 3,000 francs for finishing first in 94 H33 M14s, or 6,125 francs in all with his other prizes. Lucien Pothier was second and Fernand Augereau third. Pierre Cheney wrote. In the town which adopted Maurice Garin, at Lens, an immense procession was organized with the participation of all the notables of the region. Before leaving Paris on Monday evening, the day after the race finished, the winner paid a visit, out of politeness, to Henri de Scrange and, in a gesture without precedent, pulled a sheet of paper from his pocket. It was an article in order to simplify the interview, he explained. There he gave his feelings during the race, gave his opinion on the formula by which the race was run, gave a word of congratulation to his rivals. Garin's written note said, 1904 Tour de France. Garin also won the 1904 Tour de France, by a small margin over Lucien Pothier, but was subsequently stripped of the title which was awarded to Henri Cornet. The race aroused a passion among spectators, who felled trees to hold back rivals and beat up others at night outside street of Permilchon. Garin was one of the mob's victims. Pierre Cheney wrote. In the climb of the Col de la Rare copyright publique, leaving street of Permilchon, Supporters of the regional rider, Far, assault the Italian, Gerbi. He is thrown to the ground, beaten like plaster. He escapes with a broken finger. A bunch of fanatics wielded sticks and shouted insults, setting on the other riders. Morris and car copyright Tsar Garin got a succession of blows. The older brother, Morris, was hit in the face with a stone. Soon there was general mayhem, up with Far. Down with Garin. Kill them. They were shouting. Finally, cars arrived and the riders could get going thanks to pistol shots. The aggressors disappeared into the night. Garin said, misbehavior was rife too between riders and nine were thrown out during the race for, among other things, riding in or being pulled by cars. There were claims too, that the organizers had allowed Garin to break rules a euro at one stage being given food where it was not permitted by its chief official a euro, because his sponsor, La Frenne Section S, had a financial stake in the race. The French Cycling Union, the Union Bar Copyright Lossop a Copyright Dick Frenne Section S, heard from dozens of competitors and witnesses and in December disqualified all the stage winners and the first four finishers, Garin, Pothier, Car Copyright Tsar Garin, and Hippolyte or Couturier. The UVF did not say precisely what had happened and the details were lost when tour archives were transported south in 1940 to avoid the German invasion and never seen again. Stories spread of riders spreading tacks on the road to delay rivals with punctures, of riders being poisoned by each other or by rival fans. Lucien Petit Breton said he complained to an official that he had seen a rival hanging onto a motorcycle, only to have the cheating rider pull out a revolver. Tales were also said to include Garin taking a train, a claim confirmed by a cemetery attendant looking after his grave who, as a boy, heard Garin tell his stories as an old man. In December 1904 Garin was stripped of his title and banned for two years. Retirement, Garin retired from cycling and ran his garage in Lens until his death. The garage is still there, although wholly changed from Garin's era. An unnamed writer recalled. I remember Morris Garin well. I met him and talked to him almost every day because we lived in the same area, 200m from each other, at Lens. La Pari Garin, as my father and grandfather called him used to bring out a chair in fine weather and sit in the doorway of the little office of the service station he owned at 116 Rue de Lille in Lens, under the sign Frantar Fuel and Oil. My barber was in the neighboring house and I used to go there once a month to have a crew cut. Coupe en brosse which was the fashion in those days. My friends and I were aged 7 to 10 and on our one-speed bikes we used to pin numbers on our back. And we never missed riding past Morris Garin in a tight group so that he would see. It's strange that nobody thought to take a picture of me, the little kid, alongside the first great champion of the biggest race in the world. But life's like that. Morris Garin was far from an adulated hero even less a rich champion, 
and I don't remember any special celebration in his honor. Television crews didn't come from home and abroad to interview him. They showed no interest until he died in 1957. And the Rue de Lille, where he lived, still hasn't been renamed the Rue Maurice Garin. Garin kept his interest in cycling. He returned just once to his birthplace, in 1949, to see the tour pass through. He began a professional team under his name after the Second World War. The Dutchman Piet van Ist won Bordeaux a Euro Paris in 1950 and 1952 in the team's red and white jersey. On the tour's 50th anniversary in 1953, Garin was among several old stars waiting at the finish as part of a celebration. Death and Commemoration in 1933 the Stade Var copyright Le Drôme Maurice Garin was built in Lens, and named in his honour. In 1938 Garin was awarded the Gold Medal of Physical Education by the Minister of Sport for France, Leo Lagrange. Garin is remembered as a short, determined man, even authoritarian. As an old man he became confused. His biographer, Franco Cars, said. He, Garin wandered through Lens asking, where is the control? Where is the control? As his mind brought back images of the hotels where riders signed check sheets in the first tours, he regularly ended up at the town's police station, from where he was escorted back home. Often he was far from home, without knowing where he was or where he was going. In 2003 a street was named after him in Maubeuge on the 100th anniversary of his 1903 win in the Tour de France. In 2004 Les Amis de Parisa Euro Rubex placed a cobblestone on his grave, a traditional trophy for winners of the Parisa Euro Rubex race. In Alvia, the village in Italy where he was born, there is a monument in his honor. His biographer, Franco Cars, said, Palmara S. Grand Tour General Classification Results Timeline, Notes. References. External links. Morris Garin Profile at Cycling Archives